for Dragon Warrior 3 by Vaxer. Take it away, main stage. Oh. Uh, hello there. I see we have uh, a number of people who have uh, gotten optimum seats for the upcoming Silent Clock. Or maybe some of you have, uh, are just still basking in those sublime Castlevania runs. Either way, I will try to keep you entertained. Uh, so first off, I believe there was a bid war for the hero's name. Uh, if host, if you could uh, pick that up for me. And while you are finding that, just a quick round of introductions. Uh, I am Vax Hurd. I'm NES Cardinality. I'm Poexel. And I'm Philosoraptor42. And uh, they will be uh, assisting me greatly. Um, NES Cardinale, as you may recall, ran Dragon Warrior 1 at uh, AGDQ and did the amazing job of not only running a manipulated route, but commentating it himself. Mm -hmm. And if you've not done it before, you do not know how hard this is. Um, and uh, so I will, be, uh, I will be definitely interested to hear your, your take on that. Fuexel, of course, uh, with the uh, great Final Fantasy VI run, run coming up later in the marathon. And uh, Raptor, I know you've been looking into this run yourself mm -hmm. and I'm uh, definitely interested to hear some of the things you may have run into yourself. Mm -hmm. So without further, do, further ado, can I get the uh, hero's name? Yeah, hero name will be Command. Command? <laughs> there will be commands in this run. Yep. Excellent. With a question mark, yes? That's correct. All right. Perfect. OK, so uh, uh, I am selecting slow. This is not a mistake. Slow is fast in this game. But uh, if uh, the timer is ready, uh, I'll give you a countdown in three, two, one, go. Good luck, Bax. Good luck, sir. All right. So uh, just to get started here, we are this uh, wonderful hero who is currently lying in bed taking a nice nap. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and uh, wake up because this is our 16th birthday and we have a very important job to do at the castle. So uh, just as a, a quick point of order, uh, many of you may, may be familiar with the Dragon Quest name. Dragon Warrior and Dragon Quest are actually the same series. Uh, there was a trademark issue when these games were first released in uh, the United States. They could not use the Dragon Quest name, which was the original name of the game in Japan. Uh, but that has since been resolved, and the recent games are all called Dragon Quest, but these are, in fact, the same series. So uh, here we are going up to uh, listening to this wonderful castle music as we go up and talk to the king. And he is going to give us our mission which we will find out is to defeat a great evil, because that is, after all, what heroes do. Let's see, the, our enemy is the Archfiend Baramos, uh, who is apparently going to destroy the world. And since the world is in such danger, uh, the king gives us a fortune with which to equip ourselves, this fortune being 50 gold. 50 gold. 50 gold. <laughs> and then see, yes, you will see just how far 50 gold gets you in this world in just a moment. Uh, as you may guess, the answer is not much. I have sometimes wondered if Baramos is actually this great evil he's made out to be, because if it's only worth 50 gold to the king to defeat him, then, you know, whoops, slight mistake. Uh, sorry about that. <laughs> Controller, please. Uh, excuse me. So, uh, you see, we had 50 gold. We now have 25 gold. And we now have zero gold. Back to the king for more, right? <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm out. So, yeah. <laughs> but uh, there are actually some other uh, little things we can do later on, so we won't worry about that for a moment. Instead, we are going to go uh, find some friends to help us on our journey. So, uh, yeah. gonna... If anyone's not familiar with Dragon Warrior 2, the wings of the wyvern that he just bought are the teleport item in this game. They can send you back to any town that you've been to before. Yes, and so uh, I, may, I may need to re-roll these characters a couple of times because there are very specific agility values I need. So let's see what we get here. A four is not good enough, so we need five agility on that character, so we're going to re-roll. When, uh, when I do normal runs, I, uh, I have a specific set of names that will give me the... Uh, you know, particular agility values, other stats that I need. But uh, since you donated for this wonderful name, uh, we are going to get creative and give similarly uh, wonderful names to our other characters. So here is, we, get a, uh, we don't get a good agility, so we're going to have to reroll this one as well. Uh, actually, uh, host, if you have a donation, this might be a good time because let's take just a moment. Okay, I'll, I'll read this one since it's a bit of, of a throwback. Uh, Rodimus donated $50 and said they were so distracted by the Castlevania runs that I forgot to donate during them. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. was the first Castlevania I dug into, and here I am 17 year later, years later still playing them often. I've gotten so old. But uh, thank you, Rodimus. <laughs> thank you very much for your donation. 
Uh, wow, we are not getting this uh, agility here. It's, uh... So uh, this runs uh, pretty well RNG manipulated, and um, and it may not look evident at first, uh, but the the there walking is super important in this. And yeah, he got a good agility roll there. Mm -hmm. Particularly um, when he's on the overworld, too. Yeah. Yeah, so we'll be hoping that I do not make any more mistakes like I just did a moment ago because uh, at this point in the run, they are not uh, that important. Uh, later on, they will be uh, much more of an issue. So we have our three characters, and we are now going to go out and uh, take some of them with us. Uh, so this was actually a feature first introduced in uh, Dragon Warrior 3 uh, in which you can uh, create your own party. Uh, so the game actually gives you three characters ahead of time. You can see them here, Ragnar, Elucidus, and Hiram uh, in this case. And uh, we are going to use two of those. Uh, and so we'll start with Ragnar, a soldier. Uh, the soldier class in this game is your typical uh, uh, attacker type class. Uh, we also have Pilgrim, who is uh, your healer, and Wizard, who is the you know, uh, you know, attacking magic user. So our command has brought uh, fight and item with him. And going to head out <laughs> into the uh, <laughs> wide world and uh, see what awaits us. So just a quick bit of inventory manipulation here that will uh, come in useful later. Yep. And uh, let us see if we can find some enemies. Let us see if we can find some enemies. <laughs> Hello. Enemies. Hello. 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 There we go. There we go. Okay. So slimes. Wonderful. We know what we do with slimes. We uh, we attack ourselves. Mm -hmm. So what Vaxford's actually trying to do here is uh, kill off uh, fight an item. Um, so that's going to be important later on in the game. Yeah, because in addition to RNG manipulation, this run does also use some pretty major glitches, too. And this is uh, kind of one of the first stages of setting up for a pretty game-breaking glitch he's going to be doing. Yeah. yeah, Things will get uh, even more interesting later. But for the moment, we are going to take these two ghosts and store them at the uh, Luisa's place, which is the party storage area. Yeah, so. Luisa is open to all, alive or not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Indeed. She takes ghosts. It's no big deal. <laughs> Nothing like a haunted Luis's place to hang out and <laughs> you know join a band of adventurers. Okay, so we've left them, and now we're going to take uh, two more characters out of here. So we're going to take the uh, the wizard Elucidus, who was created for us, and we are going to take Spell with us. And then we're going to reset because uh, I did not actually screw up, but uh, there is a very clever thing we are going to do here. Uh. As you may have noticed before, he did any changes to his party, he got prompted to save the game, and uh, that's much faster than going back to the castle and talking to the king, which is yeah. kind of the primary way you yeah. save we, in this we game. Will be, yes, we will be using her as a substitute king for uh, at several points in this run. But you notice I just created a file. Uh, so this is, again, uh, a, uh, a slight change from my uh, usual route. Uh, normally, I have a specific set of names which I use in the run to guarantee me the proper RNG seed. I'll talk about the seeds later on in a bit. Uh, but for uh, the name incentive, uh, we can't quite get that, and so we need to call in the doctor. <laughs> uh, this, is, uh, this is a separate file. We are going to be repeating a little bit of what you just saw. Um, but this particular file is set up so that uh, I can uh, get a battle on the first step into the overworld, and that will tell me what my current RNG seed is. RNG being random number yeah. generator. If anybody's not familiar with speedrun lingo, it's just a term we often use to talk about random or pseudo-random elements in games. So this might be another good point where you could uh, read off a donation or two. Okay, uh, first I will tell uh, those out there who might donate that we will have a lot of time for donations during this run at a later point. So uh, if you want a chance for your comment to be read on air, it's actually a great time to get one in. Um, I just wanted to read uh, Super Seagulls here with $25 saying, I'm excited to see Dragon Warrior 3 destroyed. Command hype. <laughs> Command? Command. Command. So what may not be completely evident right here, too, is that um, Vaxherd has to walk perfectly 
to get what he's looking for here. So any missteps, any accidental opens of the item menu, any bonking into walls, and that it'll mess him up a little bit. Yeah. It is precise, but he did, but um, the game only checks for um, inputs every 16 frames, which is a uh, frame is a 60th of a second on the NES. So um, it's it's precise, but but he does have a little leeway with what he does. And if you're wondering why I stopped there for a moment, uh, the first the actions in this turn will actually tell me what I need to do. And so I was looking up. I have a table that tells me uh, exactly where I am in this particular uh, RNG sequence. Uh, and therefore, what I need to do to get back to where I need to be. So, uh, with that done, we are actually going to get back to our original file and get on with the run. Command? <laughs> Command. Yep, so, so Vax Herd is going to be um, doing a lot of stuff with this RNG here, and um, you can kind of suss it out a couple different ways. You can watch for steps that the characters are taking with their feet, or you can uh, use music. So, Vax going to do that right yeah. now, so I'm going to shut up. So just like that, uh, I, uh, I was able to use that music cue. Um, it is actually interesting that uh, you can just sit on the, on the overworld to skip an encounter, which is what mm -hmm. I was doing there. Uh, the, there is a location that you go to much later in the game called the Ghost Ship. Uh, normally it is not, well, uh, it is not unlocked until you uh, get to a specific point in the plot. Uh, but, in fact, it is always wandering on the overworld, uh, randomly moving across the seas. And every time it moves, it uses up a bit of randomness. Um, and talk a little bit later about what using up randomness means. It's a, a very specific part of this manipulation. Um, but the end result is that you can just sit on the overworld and the RNG will move past the place where an encounter occurs and uh, we can just uh, continue on yeah. our way. It's kind of the flip side of that, though, is that he that means that his movement needs to be very spot on when he's mm -hmm. on the overworld or else because he doesn't want that uh, ghost ship uh, to um, move more uh, or advance the RNG more than he wants it to or else that'll throw off his manipulation route. So nice, uh, quiet jump yeah. through the tower. Uh, yeah, there are there are <laughs> allegedly monsters in this tower. I've heard those I've rumors heard, as yeah. well, yeah. Um, but I have never seen any, so I think those are just rumors. <laughs> so I picked up the thieves' key, which is going to allow us to unlock some doors here early, and then he's going to warp back to um, Eliahan and. Uh, and he has to too, yeah. otherwise, because he's kind of right on the verge of getting into another encounter based on the. Uh, the manipulation route, and the g with the state that the game's currently in, if he did get into an encounter at this point, it would actually softlock the game, because uh, due to a bug in how the game uh, kind of assigns monsters to the encounter group, it would try to assign an infinite number of monsters at this point, and that would uh, softlock the game. Right, so he Ooh, actually... Uh, that was a critical mistake, so I'm afraid we will have to redo that part. I apologize. So as uh, we were discussing just a moment ago, uh, this part of the run is very tightly manipulated. Mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately, if we open the menu and uh, then close it, that still consumes one step of time. And at this point in the run, we have no steps that we can spare. Uh, yeah, because in that town, there are randomly moving NPCs that uh, call that RNG every step, basically. So the yeah, so like you said, his route is very tight as far as uh, all of the menu inputs. So on the upside, if you enjoy the tower music, you will have another opportunity to hear it now. So uh, we are going to go through this, uh, and uh, just to be, uh, you know, to be perfectly fair to the monsters, there are in fact monsters in this cave and in the tower. However, we have routed them out uh, by virtue of uh, a glitch in the game, which I call Seedlock. Um, so again, this uh, ties back to the discussion of uh, RNG seeds. Uh, put very simply. Uh, an RNG, random number generator, is a mathematical function. Uh, the seed is the input to that function. Uh, so, you know, like uh, y equals f of x, for those of you who uh, recall your uh, mathematics studies. Uh, the x is the seed, and the y is the uh, random number that you get out of it. Um, there is a glitch which causes, uh, for specific inputs, for specific seeds, the random number will always be the same. And by doing that, we can essentially uh, turn off the encounters for a very large sequence of steps, which yeah, is just what's happening about now. About 200 steps. Yeah. 
which is just enough to get through this entire tower. Yep, and um, so after he got out of here and, and winged back to Eliahan, you'll notice he, um, you, you would have noticed he cast heal with his pilgrim. Um, that was actually also to advance the RNG and avoid an encounter. Yeah, in Dragon Warrior 1, you can always avoid encounters by waiting to advance the RNG, but because of some of these soft lock issues, sometimes you have to cast a spell to advance the RNG properly. And I believe you always have to do that in caves because caves work a little differently because they don't have NPCs calling for random numbers. That's correct. So going to go for this once again. Uh, you've now seen why I usually call this the town boss. So uh, let you guys talk about why exactly this is so horrible. Yeah, it's <laughs> <laughs> any any misstep in your menuing and you and the runs basically over and you have to reset and start over from the uh, the last save. Um, and so this uh, this town the tool shop here we're going to be selling some stuff. Uh, the soldiers uh, leather armor, the uh, pilgrims club. Uh, things yeah. like that. Yeah, these and first two sales he's doing are actually as part of setup for the uh, for the slime ending incentive that I'm hoping has been met by this point. Oh yeah. Because he needs an extra ten gold to buy an antidote herb as part of setting up that uh, incentive later on. So we're gonna get just enough money for what we need here, and we're going to go and talk to him again and buy stuff. So he's gonna do is he's gonna buy some medical herbs for uh, command. And uh, and at least one wing, maybe two, two wings. So yeah. you are going to do two wings, okay? So yeah. two wings that he's going to give to the wizard, and the antidote for the slime setup. Okay, so uh, step one is done. Now on to step two, which is the scary fast loading screen. Uh, Raptor, do you have any trouble with this guy? <laughs> um, I haven't lately, but uh, when I first started learning this, yes, because you're only going one step down and one step left talking to this guy, and then going one step right and up real quick. I have bonked into that wall so many times yeah. when I first started learning this, and that's, uh, that, that's, that advances the RNG because of the, the uh, mm -hmm. people moving around um, in an unfavorable way, so you have to reset that too. So he's going to buy this leather helmet and give it to uh, give it to his pilgrim as part of uh, the glitch later on. And uh, now we're going to leave. Huh, we got through the time, boss. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> Thank you. It only took two tries. Second try easy every time. <laughs> so uh, going to head down here to a little cave. Yeah, uh, this part's a little more relaxed, although the, although once he actually gets going in the cave, he does have a pretty difficult encounter yeah. skip that will. Be quiet and let him uh, hear an audio cue for yeah. Yeah. But if you have a, a quick donation, you probably get one in right now. Okay, Brian donated $25 and said, excellent move. <laughs> nice. <laughs> excellent. Thank you. Okay, so uh, you may have noticed we picked up a, uh, a magic ball earlier. It's essentially a plot coupon we are going to uh, consume right here. Rip eyeballs. I mean, Rip. <laughs> <laughs> so um, another thing you will have noticed is that in the uh, in the last screen, he actually transferred the Wayfarer's clothes on the Pilgrim to him to to back to the Pilgrim. What it is, it just moved it to the bottom of his list because we want the leather helmet on top for the glitch. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So there there is a lot of inventory manipulation because there are only certain points in the inv inventory that we can glitch. And there was a mention about an encounter skip, uh, and that's coming up right here. So I'm going to be quiet. And count steps. Nice. And again, a heal is required here. Fortunately, the sprite movement is really easy to track, and it's a mm -hmm. great indicator throughout the run of how far you've walked yeah. for things like this. Because yeah, a lot of um, a lot of the similar skips like this that he's going to be doing in dungeon areas, or he can just use landmarks in the on the dungeon map in order to figure out where he needs to do it. But since he's in this kind of long, featureless hallway, there he either has to use the music or. Uh, as a cue or just count the steps or the yeah. waving of the uh, hero's sword or something like that. In that particular case, I actually started that using a music cue because I generally find music cues easier to go by. But in that case, the music cue actually does not work because uh, the time it takes to load the map is not consistent. I'm not entirely sure why, but uh, it uh, just from run to run, there's slight variation enough that uh, relying on the music cue turned out not to be reliable. And so I'm just going by steps now. 
Yeah, and even then, counting those steps because the uh, hero's feet are very light colored and so is the floor of that dungeon, yeah. you have to really <laughs> kind of focus on it. And I've missed it a couple times too because mm -hmm. of that. Yeah. So we're going to have uh, one more encounter skip uh, up here really quickly. Uh, again, we're going to use, this time we're going to do two heals. Uh, so I should have two medical herbs in here I can use. And I need to count a few steps out and then we'll get going again. Okay, so uh, that we're going to head on to our next destination. You may have noticed we uh, passed a castle down there. Don't worry about that. It's, uh, it's yeah. not important. Mm -hmm. They'll be fine. They'll find their own crown. Yeah. Yep. So we entered Knave just as it turned into nighttime, and that's because we want the tool shop owner to be asleep so we can um, borrow something from him. Yeah. yeah, and then Knave at night does not have randomly moving NPCs, so the uh, manipulation route's a bit looser here. Mm -hmm. But if he bonks into walls, that can uh, complicate it a bit. Yeah, it is possible to recover, but it's risky. Uh, so fortunately, that did not uh, become a problem, and we can go on a mountain tour. Uh, now, I was talking earlier about how, uh, how we uh, arrange for all the encounters to occur in like a bunch with this seed lock glitch. Uh, well, the problem is we need an encounter now because uh, we want one of our characters to become numb. The problem with that is that since we just skipped an encounter, we have a whole bunch of steps before the next one, and no good way to get to it. So we're just going to take a quick little tour around these wonderful yeah. mountains here. Yeah, this upcoming encounter is the whole reason for kind of coming this far into the storyline, too, just because this is our kind of earliest opportunity to get a monster that can inflict the numb status. Um, oops, that's not good. So, fortunately, we have a workaround for this. Uh, may involve us uh, dying and, re and uh, restarting, but uh, let's see. So, so that was a bit of uh, poor luck, I'm afraid. Uh, but we have a way to work around it. All right. Wing of the Wyvern. Yeah, I got a brief glimpse just yesterday of just how much work was put into making this game marathon safe, especially with different names for the main characters, and it is extremely impressive. Basically, we have contingencies for every possibility, and the RNG works a little bit differently in Dragon Warrior 3 than in Dragon Warrior 1. There's a lot more extra to, uh, to, to have to cover yourself for, so it's just super impressive to me. Yeah, so... Uh, uh Ideally, we would, like, we would have liked that soldier to survive that hit, but unfortunately, we had a little bit of damage earlier. Um, ideally, I should have noticed that and uh, done the recovery, but uh, I, I failed. I am sorry. And so we will uh, do a little bit of recovery here. Uh, we have a nice friend here in, the, uh, in Luisa's place who will give us some money to recover with. If you'll give me just a moment to pull that out. So uh, what I'm going to do is I am going to uh, grab uh, this wonderful, wonderful fellow's armor, uh, sell it off, and uh, use that to uh, recover our characters and then get us back to where we were uh, a moment ago. So yes, we want to add this new fellow, Mr. Run. So in Dragon Warrior 3, basically whenever you take an action in a battle, there's a piece of RNG that is saved in SRAM that, is, that will change as soon as you take an action in battle. And that makes it so basically we can't just reset and go back to where we were. We have to do some in-game changes. And Vaxert has a very in-depth knowledge of how that RNG works. So there's all sorts of complicated contingencies. Yeah, so we are going to pull our friend Spell back out here. So uh, it's going to take just a minute. What I'm going to do next is uh, sell this. I'm going to pick up, uh, notice I used up a couple of Wings of the Wyvern, so I will need to get those back. I will also need to revive my characters. So with all those, I need a bit of money. Uh, so I'm take care of that. And I'm going to revive them, go back. And then, if you recall, I uh, called in the doctor earlier to uh, adjust the RNG. So we're going <laughs> to do that once more. Uh, so while I'm doing that, there's probably time for a couple of donations if you want to uh, read some of those off. All right, uh, Geister Carl donated $25 and said, I know 50 gold doesn't get you far in Dragon Warrior 3. Maybe these $25 help a little more? 
Well, thank you very much. Yes, they will. <laughs> uh, random effect with fifty dollars says, nice. "Hey, Vaxard, good luck oh, hey, on random. the DW3 run. Your work on this, both this route and the Taz, inspired me to run the category. And I want to say thank you to both you and PJ for all of your help. I'm ready for all that spam. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Random. Yeah, Random is another uh, another great guy who has picked up this run recently." Uh, and uh, he's uh, done a great job. Of, I think he's down to about 48 minutes, yeah, which is a really solid time. Mm. So uh, thank you for your donation. So he, do he does need a bit of extra money to revive these characters, but not that much, just because it's the fee for revival is based on the character's level. And these are all level one right now, so it's just 10 gold each. And interestingly, money is never a problem in a game where you can recruit new characters who are automatically wearing armor at the beginning <laughs> yes. of the game. Yes. Yeah. yes, this is a very uh, convenient feature. So we are going to go over here. Uh, let's see, we, have, uh, we should actually heal ourselves up. Spell, okay. So, uh, Make sure that this time everybody has all the hit points they need. And one more herb. This last herb we're getting is for uh, RNG manipulation again. Uh, we'll be you'll be seeing a lot more a lot of that later in the run as well. Uh, but uh, this is how we uh, how we uh, move things around. So here we're just going to do a quick save, and we're going to call in the doctor. So. Uh, so ag again, we're going to have to go through that initial sequence. That's unfortunately unavoidable. So uh, uh, donation time. <laughs> uh, sure. Let's uh, start off with the big one. Uh, $700 from Fan Gamer. Wow. Nice. And their comment, uh, <laughs> mine own goodness, tis timeth for the Dragon Warrior. <laughs> Taketh this donation to aid thee in thy journey. Valorous luck. <laughs> Thank you. Fan Excellent. Gamer. Thank you, Fan Gamer. Uh, Aurorus with the ten dollars says, "Vax, be sure to herd your party in the quickest manner. Good luck I on the run. Let's not soft lock." I will do my best. Thank Cross you. Your fingers. <laughs> uh, Beta Strep donated one hundred and fifty dollars, <laughs> saying, "Of donation money, thou hast gained one fifty. <laughs> nice, <laughs> excellent. <laughs> Darth Bear B is delighted. Yes, <laughs> yes I am is. certain he is. Yes." <laughs> Uh, we have $50 from T.W. Roxas, who says, had to donate during Dragon Warrior 3. Best of luck to Vaxard. Command, command, item, wait. <laughs> 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 okay, so uh, we're just uh, getting down at here. So again, this is going to be the same as we saw earlier. Uh, we're going to walk outside the town, going to get uh, an encounter on the first step. And then I'll be looking at my chart again to see uh, exactly uh, what we need to do to get back yeah, to he's, what he's doing is he's resetting his battle seed basically yes. in order to be able to um, to kind of script out the uh, encounters and the uh, once he switches back to his actual speedrun file. Yeah, so we talked a moment ago about this bit of uh, RNG state which is stored in the uh, the save RAM and that's what we're going to be adjusting now. So let's check my chart here. Okay. It's worth noting while he's doing this that while uh, you have to be very precise with your movement on the overworld, whenever you're in battle or there is a menu open, like if you're moving around items or casting a spell using wings, you don't have to be very precise in your inputs because the RNG is essentially just waiting for you to act. And yeah, so, because like in battle, it doesn't change until you confirm the last character's action. Right. There we go. So let's see. Let's see that. And that's very fortunate when there's so much to go through. I can't stress that enough. There's so much data for yeah. making this marathon and, safe. Oh, and him changing the message speed on that E question mark file wasn't a misstep, too. That was uh, part of his setup. You know, I do need to pull up my notes for this room because this is something, this is a mistake that I rarely make. So uh, I sincerely apologize. There we go. That Looks should be the good, right encounter, yeah. yeah. All right. Okay, this time, hopefully, everything will go as it should. Right. 
So what you, you'll see now, Vax Hurt did was uh, with the hero, he parried and then actually hit B to go back into the hero's turn and then hit fight. And that's, uh, this game has a nice little, we'll call it a feature, I guess. Yeah. Where yeah, sure. um, if you parry with any of the first three characters and then go back to their turn and do something, the parry still sticks. And, uh, yeah, and that, the parry stat is halves the amount of damage you take on the next round of combat. So being able to both have that and uh, be able to attack is nice. Those little hesitations there, by the way, too, were more manipulation, because when you have the numb status, you can randomly break out of it just through uh, overworld movement, and um, he was dodging uh, specific windows where if he took a step, he would get unnumbed. So uh, the hardest part of the run is actually over, and I mm -hmm. am relieved. <laughs> <laughs> so, yep. uh, yes, I'm sorry it uh, went so uh, jitteringly, but uh, things should go a little bit more smoothly from this, this point out. I am making a backup save here because for the next part of the run, which is where we actually do the uh, fun glitching, there is a chance that we can glitch out a part of the game to make it com uncompletable at all. Uh, and so just in case that happens, fairly rare. Um, yeah. But I've that, had it happen yeah. before. That so. wing there is just to get out of the castle faster. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that's why I bought an extra wing. Uh, as I think Raptor was saying, I usually mm -hmm. get only one, but having the extra one makes it that much faster to get back here to Luisa's. So uh, here we're going to bring back uh, our soldier, uh, Mr. Ragnar. Yeah, who still has the numb status yeah. that got preserved when he, got, when he was left at Luisa's. Yeah, now we're going to leave... Uh, our wizard Elucidus first, so that is going to leave Ragnar as the only living character in the party. Uh, now, normally you would expect the game would not let you leave your last living character, um, but there is an interesting bug, so let's see what happens. Spooky. Well, <laughs> ghost party. <laughs> Too spooky, five me. <laughs> so here we can bring back fight and item. If you recall at the very beginning, we uh, turned them into ghosts as well. And we are going to have a ghost party. Ooh. Now this is going to confuse the heck out of this game, and it's going to yeah. be fun. Yeah, OK, so I'm going to come down here. I'm going to do one quick uh, inventory uh, manipulation here. And then uh, we're going to walk out into the overworld and take a close listen to this music, because we're going to change around reality a bit. We're going to do one more cycle, and then we'll start talking about exactly what sort of s insane stuff is going on in the background. OK, so uh, uh, what do you guys want to take stuff? Because I've got a bunch of menuing to do. Yep, so, um, so what Vaxhard was doing there, he was using the, uh, the music to determine when to walk. And so when he was taking the damage, um, because he's all ghost and they all have zero hit points. The game doesn't really know what to do with the damage and just starts kind of slinging it down the code and it kind of stops based on where he takes that step. Yeah, because um, he's kind of abusing code where the game checks if you're standing on a swamp tile in the overworld and should be taking damage. And uh, um, it kind of normally counts how many living characters you have, but it can't really count up to zero is the problem when you don't have any living characters. So it's kind of, it's just, it's exceeding the boundaries of um, where in the game's memory um, your character's party, uh, your, your party member's uh, data is stored, and then it's trying to subtract hit points from just other parts of memory, which ha is having some very special effects now. So we're going to have a few more cycles that look just like this. Hopefully they all go that smoothly, but mm -hmm. uh, there is a chance. This is the one point in the game where RNG actually plays a material part, and so we're going to uh, pray that uh, that doesn't actually become an issue. Yeah, so notice he, kn he now has the rainbow drop, which is an end game quest item. He has a black raven, which is a monster that's outside uh, <laughs> yeah. this castle. Yeah, you, then, you'll see uh, what that does later. He has later. a red it's orb equipped, which is another quest yes, item. Yes, mm -hmm. it's uh, most fascinating. Uh, so we're going to do uh, another cycle here. So I did make a slight mistake earlier. I'm going to uh, change the set of steps I take for this cycle. Uh, there is a shield of heroes, which I need to move onto the, onto the hero before it gets glitched into something else. And we should also now have a sphere of light, which is a wonderful item that will come in handy later in the game. And 
uh, oh, and by the way, there's another thing I should probably show you. Uh, one of our pilgrims here has a bunch of uh, nice spells down there. Uh, it's another uh, facet of this glitch. Uh, yeah, you got the game to basically subtract your hit point from his pilgrim's spell list. Mm -hmm. And another thing he did that we won't be readily able to show you is that he uh, subtracted a hit point from his warp list and now Remolder's in his warp list. <laughs> So he'll be able to go there even though he's never been there. Very important to allow us to skip about an hour of in-game plot. So this is one of the unfortunate things that can happen. Uh, the game suddenly recognizes that you know something isn't quite right and reminds you that uh, one of your characters is dead. Uh, that's uh, very kind of it, but unfortunately that is actually not something we need. So we're going to have to redo that one step. Now see that we have Armor of Radiance, basic job. Okay. So oh, we have a Sword of Kings. Unfortunately, we are probably going to lose that, uh, and so we're going to have to take an extra cycle later on to get it out. Uh, so now we have the, uh, our commands in the proper order, for those of you who may have been worried about the uh, spell coming first. <laughs> Do a little bit of dancing here again. I believe for that cycle, we had to do that dancing in order to prevent the menu from popping up from being idle too long. Yes. That would have messed up the timing for his uh, for his manipulation cycle yeah. there. Yeah, that's right. So I'll, I'll go into a little into more detail a little bit later. But uh, there is uh, we are in fact using the music itself to uh, to glitch the game, and so I have to step on very specific notes, and. If, uh, and if I let the status box pop up like this, then it turns out, if you give me just a moment, get a few steps in here, it turns out that one of the steps we need, we can't get if that status box pops up because it is only 10 frames long uh, and a single step cycle is 16 frames. So we just skip right over it. And so I believe we should be almost done. Uh, nope, we lost Sword of Kings, so you'll just have to do that. Uh, uh, one more cycle in just a moment, but that won't take very long. We are almost done with this. So for those of you who want me to get on with it, I am almost yeah. there. Yep. Come on, we need, we need to go fight Baramos. That's I mean, who? We're here for. who? Who's Bar Baramos? Who? <laughs> who is this Baramos you talk about? Oh, he's that guy that the king wanted to pay us 50 gold for. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's 50 gold, we don't care. Yeah. So, um, so we do want the Sword of Kings because it is a very wonderful sword. Um, it's basically the best, strongest sword in the game for the yeah. hero that also casts the Infermost spell if you mm -hmm. use it in battle. Yeah. Which yeah. is crazy that it loses that ability in Dragon Warrior 1. <laughs> yeah. it's, the, it's the sword of Erdrich in Dragon <laughs> Warrior 1. Yeah. So, uh, so we need the Sword of Kings, and so we are going to buy clothes. Makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we're going to come out here and do uh, this should be our last cycle. So I just need to do two more steps to uh, tweak that, and we will be ready to go. Yep, that should be and it. Just like that. Just uh, double check. We do, yep. in fact, have All a right. sort of things there. So uh, with that done, we do need a little bit more money. So uh, if you recall, Black Raven is an enemy. Uh, so normally they are very vicious, not domesticated. There are rarely d domesticated Black Ravens. And as you can see, they are very popular among the gentry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and so with our newfound fortune, we are going to go ahead and pick up some useful items. We're going to get a Wing of the Wyvern. Uh, a uh, late game town was mentioned earlier. We need to have a way to get there. And we're going to pick up some herbs because we always need herbs. Healing is great, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. So and we're going to be going on a humanitarian effort here in a little bit and use those herbs. Indeed. So we're going to need to pick up uh, about four more of these, and then we're actually going to go ahead and revive our characters. And as the healer from Dragon Warrior 2 says, it's a very delicate operation. It may take a little while. <laughs> and so since it will take a little while, why don't we see if we have any donations? We do indeed. Uh, Mint Kuro sent in $10 and said, have to donate for Dragon Warrior 3. It was always my favorite Dragon Warrior game growing up, and I have so many memories with it. All hail Loto and Erdrick. <laughs> uh, also, Great. praise the sun. <laughs> um, 
Here's Hawkeye7704 with a $50 and says, can't even tell you how stoked I am that my favorite game of all time is being ran at GDQ. Enjoying all the Dragon Quest love we've seen this year. Good luck, Vaxard. Thus a legend was born. Yes, thank you very much. Here is $25 from Anonymous who says, I wanted to donate during my favorite RPG series. Shout out to Vax, NES Card, and the other runners of this series. Good luck. So we are one by one uh, restoring our commands to their rightful place in our menu. So we got two more to go here. Spell and item. And as you can see, we actually won't need anywhere near this much money, but... Uh, a little more money never hurts. So a nice thing about having this much money too is, so another uh, side effect of the glitch that Vaxer did is that um, uh, the two pilgrims and the, uh, the the two pilgrims more likely than anything um, could potentially lose some of their max HP, and if they go too far down, Vaxer's going to have to buy some magic armor and remolder to make sure they don't die. And having that much money will make that happen. Yeah, because the other glitched item that he could um, get and sell to afford the revival and, you know, and the herbs and stuff here is called a stick slime, but uh, I think that's only like 270 gold. 277, yeah. I think, yes. Yeah. So there wouldn't really be much leeway there. It looks like his HP is good, though, yeah, the so HP we don't worry is about good, it. Yep. So I just need to do a little bit of inventory manipulation. Uh, unfortunately, this game is uh, very verbose about uh, moving things around, so this will take just a moment, but uh, we do want the Sword of Kings at the top uh, for the... Uh, the battles we're going to be doing later. So yeah. unfortunately, the only way to do that is just one and by one move each of these that's, And that's not really for glitching or anything. That's just for, for, just for convenience mm -hmm, so yeah. that it's at the top of his list when he wants to use it. So uh, with that done, I will make this one final check before I erase our, our uh, safety save. And yes, there is a wonderful town name in there that we have not yet visited. So we are all set to get going. So fortunately, precision is not required for this section because we're done with our fighting until our next save. And once we save, everything is going to be set for the next section. Yep. All right. So we're going to once again save here at Luisa's place. And uh, another reset. So we're going to be going, uh, going through this a few more times because uh, we need to set up another file. If you notice in my menu, I have this E question mark file, which I have been using uh, to set up the RNG. We're going to do something similar, but with a different name this time. And actually, I needed to reset before I do that. So uh, give me just a moment. I will need to go do a couple more resets here. Uh, fundamentally, what we're doing here, uh, the, uh, we talked earlier about the, uh, the battle seed, which uh, is stored in the save RAM and is shared between all the different files. Uh, and uh, since it is shared between all the files, we can set up a, a file on a different number, change that battle seed, come back to our original game, continue it, and the battle seed will still have, have the new changed value. So we are going to do this. Uh, three. that, uh, we should be ready to go on our quest for experience. Because you may have noticed we're still all at level one, and uh, even on the manipulated glitched run, uh, fighting a final boss at level one is not going to be very successful. Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. we are going to go ahead and find ourselves some experience. Uh, first so that's off, what all Dragon Quest is in the end, right? Grinding. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, it is, it is the grind. Uh, it's time to grind. Oh, nice. But the good news is, is that uh, we can do all our grinding on one fight, so <laughs> it's much better. So, uh, and uh, just like that, we are skipping 90% of the game. Here we are in the dark world. And, oops, that is not the correct battle, however, so nope. uh, we will need to try that once more. So what Vaxor is going to do is he's going to manipulate his way into a, an encounter with three metal babbles, and he's going to kill two of them, and then we'll have one run away, and he's going to get 26,800 experience, which is going to level the uh, hero to 17 and the other three to 18. Yes. So, uh, yes, you now have shot. an idea of what's <laughs> coming up. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to begin three. So uh, one very sneaky thing about setting this up, uh, I was talking earlier about how these specific names set up this specific RNG seeds. Uh, however, uh, that's also based on the order of the files in memory. Sometimes the game will shift around the files. Uh, sometimes there will be garbage left over from a previous file. So all of that specific data affects what the seed turns out to be. And so last time we didn't quite get it right, so we're going to uh, 
adjust things, do it once more. So we do need to set up this equipment again. Uh, see, we, uh, we uh, put the club on the uh, Pilgrim there. There's a very good reason for that, which we'll see in a moment. And, and once more, wing over to Rimildar. And this time, hopefully, we will get the battle that we desire. Yeah. It's yeah, also it looks like we're good. worth pointing out that the ghost ship doesn't exist in Elfgard, so his um, timing for his movement yep. doesn't need to be quite as precise. There here. we go. So, oh my goodness, metal babbles, and they are surprised. So we will fight, heal, fight, fight. And then how about spell that is crit, crit for ten? Mm -hmm. Poison needle with its instant kill effect. We're actually going to run away because we're scared of all this experience, but we <laughs> fail, and instead we get twenty-six thousand eight hundred experience, which means we sit back and level. It's My dear time. host, would you happen to have any <laughs> donations for us? Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, they speed around the leveling. I'll try to speed around these comments. Ortega with $25 says, My son, command. This is a donation from your father. <laughs> <laughs> just please promise me that if you ever find me and I'm fighting a King Hydra, don't just stand there and watch. <laughs> <laughs> right? <Well. laughs> so Ortega might be a bad father, but he's a bad son for watching. Uh, Mr. Popo donated $25 and said, I've been looking forward to this Dragon Quest run. Old NES RPGs are some of the most fascinating speedruns, in my opinion. Uh, Dragon Karask donated $10 and said, Dragon Quest slash Warrior got me into gaming as a teen, and I've played most of them. I love seeing them get destroyed utterly. Love the Dragon Warrior run last year and love the one this year. Here's yep. $25 from Cake Stino who says, I grew up loving the Dragon Quest slash Warrior franchise, and I always get so excited seeing the runs during any of the GDQs. Thank you for running these games for a great cause. And command? <laughs> command. <laughs> Thank you for all of the donations. So yeah, just to go back a little bit about all of the uh, strange stuff that has been going on. Um, so uh, we talked a little bit earlier about the seed lock. Uh, what this accomplishes for us, aside from just being able to skip encounters, it also lets us work out exactly what's going to happen in a battle. Uh, because uh, what happens in the end with the seed lock is the random, the random numbers turn into a simple uh, counter that goes up from 0 to 255 over and over. Uh, one way to think about it is uh, if you think of an RNG, a random number generator, as a deck of cards. And normally a game will take this deck of cards, shuffle it, will draw one at a time, and those are the random numbers, the damage in battle or what have you. Um, what we do with the seed lock is we force the game to stack them all in order. And then the game goes to give us a random number, but it's just pulling up all the aces and then all the twos and so on. Yeah. So when the game goes to find an encounter, this particular game, uh, when it goes to see has an encounter occurred, what it does is, in this example, uh, was the card an ace? Uh, so normally, you know, the aces could be anywhere in the deck. You never know when you're going to get an encounter. But with the seed lock, we know all the aces are at the top. And so we arrange to skip those four, and then we know that for the rest of the deck, we can walk freely. So uh, that's kind of another way to look at this. Yeah, and then the initial setup for the seed lock is just it's something he had prepared with the file two on his cartridge before uh, starting the run yeah. too. Yeah, and it's not a uh, significant setup. All I did was create a file with that particular name, the same way I did the YPP file that I used to set up this battle. Uh, the way you set the seed in this game, the very first seed that the uh, game uses, is by the uh, what's called the checksum. It's the way a game determines whether a file is uh, corrupt or not. Some, you, if you may have taken an old NES or Super Nintendo cartridge, plugged it in and said, oops, your data is corrupt because the battery died. That's how it figures that out. Um, and this, this checksum, it's a number in the game's memory, um, controls that initial seed. So by setting a specific name, that will give us a specific seed which we can then use uh, to manipulate our own game. And I believe all of these stat gains from the level ups are affected by the seed lock too. So that's yeah. putting all of his stats yeah. in a known state as that far as correct. the, yeah. the yeah, upcoming that, fights. Yeah, this, this particular one we are not using seed lock. We are using the different seed that specifically loaded this battle, which oh, is actually okay. a good yeah. thing because when we are using seed lock, and you'll see this actually later because we will get a few more levels in the final dungeon. When we're using seed lock, all of the basic stats, strength, agility, vitality, all of these will only go up at most one point per level. They'll either be zero or one. Um, so if we were stuck with that, we would be able to get to these levels, but we would not probably not be strong enough to survive the final, uh, the final boss rush. So for this particular case, it is good that we have a different seed that will give us higher level ups. So, uh, this category was not run for a long time, and the main reason is a very different reason than most. Um, Vaxer created the Taz, but if, correct me if I'm wrong with any of this, but I believe 
that the community at large was worried about doing a run without corrupting some data on your cartridge and essentially ruining it. There, yes, there was a uh, concern about that. Um, so I've actually looked into this. When I was developing the task, I was looking into the game and seeing exactly how it works. So, I, uh, and so I'm aware that you know, I figured out that there is no actual danger to the cartridge. Uh, there is um, a one possible uh, issue uh, related to that, which is, if you recall the stick slime item earlier, it's a glitched item. Um, if you use that, what happens is the game uh, essentially hard locks. It uh, goes off, tries to execute memory from uh, the game's hardware registers, and uh, I don't think it could cause any hardware damage, but it's certainly not a design feature of the system, and so you know that is something that uh, you do not want to do. Um, but other than that, uh, it, the, the rest of this, all of this glitching is entirely within the program. It is a, an error that was made in the program, but it is not a, an error or a problem with the system itself. So uh, this is safe, and uh, you know, that's why I'm here. Yeah. <laughs> also, if anybody's getting concerned, by the way, about the health of Vexherd's thumb from having to mash through all of these level up messages, he, uh, he actually can just hold down the A button and uh, buffer them all frame perfect. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> But yeah, basically, once Vax heard determined that everything was safe, he did the world's first uh, console run on hardware. About this, I think this was about a year and a half ago, and he's had the world record ever since, gradually lowering it. Yeah, it's um, it was I believe uh, yeah about a year ago um, that I did the first run on console, and uh, you know, I've made various tweaks to the run since then. Uh, Got it down to uh, about to a 44-44 is my current record, which I kind of like, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's nice yeah. little symmetry. Yeah. Yes, so. Uh, so this is, as you can see, this is still going on. So maybe you can squeeze in a few more donations. Sure. I've got a ton of great ones here, but probably one of the most relevant right now, I feel, is from Nopsled909090, who donated $50 and said, the amount of preparation from Vaxherd is awe-inspiring. Thank you for your dedication and effort for all of our entertainment and charity. Keep doing what you're doing. Thank you for your comment and donation. Uh, Leo37 donated $5 and said, I remember renting DW3 for one week with my hard-earned lawn mowing money. Uh, speaking of, the battery on the cartridge didn't work, so I left my Nintendo <laughs> on for one week while I played. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no, that's awesome unfortunate. Awesome uh, um, Vincara donated $25 and said, I'm donating for my husband, Bakar, as this was his first RPG ever, and he's too entranced by the run to remember to donate. <laughs> <laughs> Less than three. Yeah, sounds like that other guy for Castlevania, huh? <laughs> well, I'm certainly glad you're enjoying it. Uh, Is it the same guy? Oh. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, we are actually getting pretty close to the end here. I guess one other thing to go back and cover, that uh, glitching that I was doing, uh, we kind of talked about it a little bit, but uh, the reason all of that works is because uh, as just a uh, really lucky coincidence, uh, when we step out onto the world map with nobody alive, and we were talking about how the uh, game will try and look at lots of memory because it doesn't know how to count from one to zero, um, as it happens, there is one character location uh, which we can control, and uh, it's and what it is, is it is the pointer. If you think of uh, the game's music as like a, a piece of sheet music, and you have a finger sort of pointing to that music, saying, where are we in the melody? Uh, that pointer is a number in the game's memory. And what we can do is use that to control which piece of data we overwrite. So for example, by stepping on a certain note, we modify the first item in the second characters or the fourth character's inventory. and. Uh, that is how we can uh, do this uh, as accurately as we can. In the, uh, the test, the tool assistant speed run, uh, we can actually take more steps uh, per cycle because we can uh, do frame perfect input. Um, I decided frame perfect, requiring frame perfect input was not a good thing <laughs> for a real time run, and so I cut down the number of steps, and that was how I was able to make it work in real time. And with that, we are just about done at last. There we go. Now for the most important part of the notes. Oh, by the way, notice how we're in critical health yes. now, too. Mm -hmm. yeah, so, <laughs> yeah, so I'll pull up the text box here. You can see this green indicates that you're in critical health. Notice we never actually lost any hit points. It's just that we gained so much uh, in our maximum hit points uh, that the game thinks we were critical. Yep. But we're fine now. So we're going to come back here, do one more save, because we want to go back to seed lock uh, that, we, uh, that I was talking about a moment ago. And so we're going to have to come back here to Luisa and save. And as Puesel was just saying, the most, important, the most important note in the run, do not reset early. 
So you notice there was a short delay between when I said uh, leave, which is just to get her to save, and when she started putting her next text up. During that time, the game is actually saving. Uh, and if you reset before the text comes up, uh, it will say your file is corrupted and you will have lost your run. So we do not yeah. want to do that. Fortunately, we did not. And so we are ready to get on to the final bit of the run here. So I'll do uh, one quick bit of uh, item movement here and get all, all of our fancy equipment on our hero and let us get going. So. Going to fight Baramos, right? The um, who? The king who? wanted us to fight. <laughs> Who's? Who is this Baramos guy? <laughs> So do one quick encounter skip here. Uh, need two heals here because we are in a forest and the encounter rate is slightly higher in forests. And one heal turns out is not enough to skip the, uh, the encounter there. And so uh, we do that. We skip the encounter. And again, we have you know, about 200 or so steps of free movement. So you will be seeing a little bit more in the way of uh, using heals or a little bit uh, in terms of number of heals because going forward, we need to not only skip encounters, we also need to set uh, the RNG to very specific locations, uh, yeah. very specific and then values. One, another one of the items that he glitched into his inventory was a wizard's ring, which is a, uh, it's normally an MP restoration, well, it is an MP restoration item, but um, it all, it, um, when he uses it, it has a chance to randomly break. I mean, it's not going to break because of his manipulation, but um, the game checking to see if it's supposed to break or not changes the RNG in a different way from a heal spell. So that gives them uh, kind of extra flexibility with how to uh, mm -hmm. set up the manipulation route. This final section of the game, we've done a lot of setup up to this point, and now finally we're doing uh, a large section that sort of looks more like you know a general uh, RNG manipulation section. It works a little bit differently in, than in Dragon Warrior 1, but essentially the meat of it is we still get to skip all our random encounters, and we have to manipulate our way carefully through some forced encounters. The first of which are coming up in this room here. So I'm going to, uh, I did two heals you saw earlier, and I'm doing uh, three uses of the wizard's ring here, and then I'm going to do seven more heals. And uh, again, this is to set up a very specific RNG uh, value when the battle starts, because uh, you know, we need to not just skip encounters, we need to control what happens in the encounters that we do get, which is uh, the boss battles. So that is four. And the convenient thing here is I can just look at how many MP I have left to see uh, how many heals I've used. So this is going to be number seven. And now we can go ahead and open that door. And it closes behind us. Oh, no. What are we going to do? I'm just going to walk to the right a little bit and then walk <laughs> to the left a little bit. And... Oh, Lord, look at that. We are the guards of the chamber. You will have to defeat us first. Well, and that's important. Yeah. Well, as it happens, <laughs> we have a spell called Defeat, and it works. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> we have thus defeated the Granite Titans, but uh, but wait, there's more. Literally. More Granite Titans. <laughs> <laughs> so you see there are three sets of pairs of statues in this room. You have to defeat all three pairs consecutively. And through RNG manipulation, we can make sure that defeat spell works every time. And their uh, command is going to gain is level 18. And, and you can see goes. how we're getting just the 1-1-1-1-1 one, 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 mm -hmm. one there. And that is the effect of the uh, seed lock. You'll see that at the very end of the game, too, after the final boss is defeated. A little nice effect of that. Yeah. So here he's healing twice and using the ring twice to set his RNG where he wants it. So that heal spell also makes sure defeat works and that the RNG is in where he wants it. And here, all the rest of our parties can gain level 19. So we're actually all going to be 20 by the time we hit Zoma, yeah. which is going to be what we need. Yeah, well, we, it would probably not be recommended for a vanilla run. You probably want to be the, closer to 40. Yeah, the yeah. mid-30s <laughs> at least. <laughs> yeah, but uh, we have the power of math on our side, yep. so we are going to go ahead with what we've got. So uh, with that, we've got our uh, three sets of uh, Granite Titans down. We very conveniently just learned the spell Step Guard, so we're going to go ahead and use that. And walk on this uh, wonderful barrier damage tile stuff. And we are going to look around and, and gosh, gosh, a stairway. stairway. 
So next we have this wonderful D-pad maze here. So you can all see all these diamond tiles on the floor. Now you have to be very careful because all of these tiles, they will change the direction you move when you press your D-pad. There's a very specific path that we have to take to make sure we don't fall in any of these pits. Uh, because if you fall in the pit, you know, you're going to fall down to the floor, you're going to waste steps, you're going to have to reset. But we don't want to do that, and so we're just going to not fall in tiles. So. And you want to know how you do that, guys? You hold, hold up. up. <laughs> <laughs> just go spoiling my secrets, why don't you? <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So that is done, and we now come down here, and we're going to do another encounter skip and manipulation. So this is going to be six heals and two wizard rings. So I hope you all like the uh, spell effect, because... Yeah, I'm going to get to hear it quite a bit. <laughs> so, wizard ring. And we're going to head down to the uh, next floor. So uh, some of you may have uh, watched me run this game at uh, RPG Limit Break last year. That was uh, actually the first time I'd run it in the marathon. Uh, in my route at the time, uh, I had four extra steps that I needed to take before going down these stairs. I did not take them and very bad things happened afterwards. Uh, however, uh, in a wonderful coincidence, I discovered that I do not, in fact, need to take those steps there. And so I have now moved them down to this floor. And I will be taking them right up here. We are going to walk up here. We're going to go one, two, three, four. And we're going to head across this bridge. And we are going to discover. There's our main Ortega. Our hero fighting, the fighting a monster alone. Poor guy has been uh, trapped down at the bottom of this volcano for who knows how long, fighting Ortega. Still going on, still going on. But uh, um, spoilers, he's not going to last very long. <laughs> so, yeah, so the RNG uh, guarantees that Ortega loses in two turns. Um, so that it's pretty quick. Mm -hmm. It's an interesting fact to note, by the way, that Ortega dies here. And uh, we're going to get a uh, little message from him, his dying words to his son, who he does not realize is right here. Poor guy. Um, but as it happens, uh, when the programmers uh, designed this, they actually put in a case, a message for uh, what would happen if Ortega won. It will say Ortega used up the last of his strength and passed away, or, or things of that nature. Uh, and uh, none uh, else? Uh, what? Uh, what? Uh, what? Uh, what? Uh, <laughs> what? <laughs> no treasure for you. Uh, uh, Sage of Stone. Uh, what's Sage of Stone? I don't need Sage, Sage of Stone. Stone. I've got math. <laughs> okay. um, yeah. but, but yes, the uh, programmers. Uh, put in a, a, a special message for that. But as it turns out, uh, it is impossible for Ortega to win that battle, mathematically impossible. I actually wrote a simulator to test that out because I was curious. Uh, there are about 268 million possibilities for uh, the game state on, when you enter that battle. Every single case, Ortega loses. Um, so it, is, it ended up being an unnecessary thing. But I like to call it out because it's an example of good programming. Yeah. They may have had some glitches in this game, but that thing they did right. And as a programmer myself, I like to, uh, to call out when people do good things. So I that was a great step. But now it's time for revenge. Yep. Now it is time for revenge. Got revenge for our uh, poor father. So uh, I am actually going to have to concentrate on these menus. So if you guys want to... Yeah, so, so actually, coincidentally, this being the first fight in the boss rush, this is the one that's going to take the longest to kill. Um, he's going to take four turns to kill King Hydra. And, and then I, th I think Raptor mentioned the parry glitch uh, earlier on in the run, and um, it's going to be used fairly extensively in these uh, boss fights too, where he's going to select the parry command and then to move on to the next character, then cancel back, and then the game doesn't actually remove the parry status, and that just that halves the amount of damage they take on the next round. And so here, um, he queued up with Spell, he queued up Revive because he knew Fight was going to die. And since Spell went first, Fight still gets his uh, Infermost off there. Very confusing terminology. <laughs> <laughs> and then for the most part, he's using Infermost or the Sword of Kings, which casts Infermost when you use it in order to do, uh, to do high damage attacks. Few exceptions, though. And there's level 19 on uh, Command. And so here he's going to use the, or give the wizard ring over and uh, start using it so on his other characters. Yep, so it's important there that he pick transfer and not mm -hmm. discard too, mm -hmm. because th th this game doesn't actually have any confirmation text to uh, throw away items. Yes, and every now and then it will, uh, when you press something on the D-pad, it will double input and uh, bad things can happen. Fortunately, oh. I have never had that happen and it has not happened here. So uh, 
you, you know where that actually happens to me a lot, and it's annoying, is the A button. Yes, that is another <laughs> thing that, uh, yeah, it happens to me from time to time as well. Uh, it's very frustrating, but uh, we learn to deal with it. So going into our second battle here. Yeah, it's a, a bear most thing, I guess. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Baramos cameo, I guess, mm -hmm. but uh, this is ordinarily kind of a nasty fight just because Baramos can do one or two actions per turn and you can cast Explode, which is, I believe, the strongest multi-target attack spell in the game, but uh, through the manipulation, he's actually guaranteeing that uh, Baramos Bomus only gets one action per turn. And this is Baramos Bomus's last round of life. Mm -hmm. Press F to pay respects. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. So the, uh, the remaining... Uh... So I'll, I want you to pay attention here because this, if you don't, if, you don't uh, if, if you're not used to this run, this is going to look weird, but uh, Vaxford's only going to heal his pilgrims yeah, so before going into the next fight. And notice <laughs> his wizard's at 12 HP. It's, it's not a problem. It's not everything's a problem at all. Everything's, everything's going to be fine. Ooh, wrong one. Okay, well, we can deal with that. We can deal with that. Everything's going to be fine. Trust me. Mm -hmm. Yep, so here what's going on is that surround spell is going to ensure that uh, old zombie Baramos here doesn't actually do any damage like that. <laughs> yeah, because surround just lowers the accuracy pretty substantially of the uh, affected uh, character or monster. He's going to miss again, and then here's turn three where we uh, salute our boy, Baramus Gonus, and uh, wish him a happy afterlife. Do undead creatures have an afterlife? Or I don't is know. it an after death? After, after afterlife. Death. Yeah. And here's where uh, level 20 happens for command, and we'll have our final levels for a Zoma fight, and uh, command being level 20 is pretty essential, as we're going to see in a minute. Yeah. So you notice I originally, I should have healed fight and spell uh, in the last battle. Uh, I didn't. Uh, however, we can actually work around that problem. Um, how are we going to do this? You know, here's what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to give you a little preview of what's coming up. Uh, heal more item. Command. Uh, and then you, uh, you may have noticed we had this interesting item called the Staff of Change in Inventory. We're going to use that real quick. And I'll, look, we all turned into sages. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So here's Zoma. And, uh, oh, this music is so good. This it's is amazing. And what you're going to see here is what has become a very commonplace way of dealing with certain enemies in RPGs. But I believe this was the first, at the very least, North American released RPG to employ it. So I think that's pretty neat. And see, the uh, hero has one HP left, so and all good, all so good. does spell. <laughs> um, <laughs> and so that's why these levels were very, pretty essential. And we're going to go through with our humanitarian effort here and... Uh, yeah. Give give Baramos the healing, or not Baramos, but Zoma the healing he needs. Yep. The herbs have a widely fluctuating range of damage, but of course we've manipulated our RNG to ensure that we do all the values that are high enough to defeat him with over a thousand HP. Yeah, I mean heal healing item. Oh, by the way, yeah, these, this is a debuff attack that does nothing. Yeah, if we don't because have buffs. we don't have any buffs up. We don't need them. And. And there he goes. Up, pay respects. So uh, <laughs> yeah. time is not yet, by the way. There is a little bit more walking to do. Yeah. But just to finish that, though, being able to cause damage to Zoma is an intended game mechanic that was kind of put in as a kind of an Easter egg by the uh, developers. And uh, But um, if, you, like, if you cast Heal More or Heal All or something, it does about the same damage as it heals you. But they kind of forgot to, to, um, to actually assign herbs a proper damage range against Zoma. So it actually... Uh, it does way, way, way more damage than it would heal you as a result. Mm -hmm. yeah. You saw on the previous screen there were a bunch of random holes popping up. They normally uh, appear in random places on the screen, but again, because we're in a seed lock, they appear in a nice diagonal line, and I always thought that looked really nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. so interesting story about that. When I was first developing the task, uh, I got to that point. I spent about a week, I think. Uh, just, uh, it was just solid math working back and forth through those four battles, trying to find the combination of uh, actions that would let me survive. 
and I finally got through it, uh, and I got to that point. I thought the game had soft locked. I thought the seed lock effect that I had had caused the game to get stuck, and I was quite upset for about you know 10 seconds or so until it finally you know finished up. But I thought the game had soft lock, and I was really disappointed because I had I thought I had what I thought was a really great route, and it was going to be spoiled at the very last moment, <laughs> right after you know after I kill the final boss, and yet I can't complete the run. <laughs> so. Uh, but, uh, yeah, because like in most Dragon Quest slash Dragon Warrior games, you don't really you don't you have to go home. You have to mm. re to report on your glorious deeds after uh, killing the final boss. And that's that's where timing is going to end. Yeah. So, so, so I myself run uh, all four Dragon Warriors, and pretty much all the work I've done recently with Dragon Warrior two and three is a direct result of the pioneering vision that Vaxer had created with his uh, tool-assisted analysis of both games, and it goes so far deeper than you can just see through a run like this. So hopefully we've done a decent job of explaining mm. to you exactly what's going on. But before we're done, though, we have one last yes. uh, one last uh, bit of business to attend I, to. I believe the uh, slime ending incentive was met. Yeah. It was indeed. Excellent. So uh, let's uh, see who our true heroes are. <laughs> and by the way, the comments over here have been very appreciative. So you've been doing a great job in uh, explaining things. Thanks. Okay. So if, if anybody is a Star Wars fan, which I can't imagine anybody is in a group like this, <laughs> um, uh, the hero gets all the glory here, and I feel like the other three party members are all Chewbacca, and they don't get a medal. <laughs> like, they don't even get mentions. So we may have to do this a few times until we get yeah. the specific keep it, character. Keep in mind, because yeah, the, the Staff of Change is a quest item you normally need to turn in to, to get um, the Sailor's thigh bone earlier, but uh, he, he, because of the glitching, he has one at this point, which has a pretty, pretty fun effect, basically, so, if you end the game hmm. with it. Yeah, so uh, we're coming up on time here, so uh, if you get ready on that. And time. That was one hour, nine minutes, and 55 seconds. Well, you know, given all the mistakes in the beginning, that's probably not a bad mm. time. I was hoping to get under an hour, but, uh, well, things happened. Uh, nonetheless, I'm, uh, I'm glad I was able to get through it. And I hope you all enjoyed it. And thus the legend of the slimes was yes, born. I, I, I give you the true heroes of Alephgard. The slimes. Yes. So if, if any of you want to, those of you who've played Dragon Quest games, you probably know how you come across a slime somewhere in a town and says, hey, I'm not a bad slime. Now you know where they come from. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, that, uh, that will uh, I guess close out the run. I, uh, thank you to my uh, wonderful couch for helping me through. Yeah. Um, so shout outs to the, um, to the uh, Dra uh, Dragon Quest Discord, everybody there who's, uh, who's running the game. Uh, shout outs to the uh, Japanese Dragon Quest community. I'm sure they all knew all of this stuff years before I even looked at it. Um, Dragon Quest 3 in particular, the, uh, there was a Super Famicom, which is a Super Nintendo remake of that game in Japan. It is uh, the big speedrun game of Japan. It's Japan Super Mario 64, and uh, it's just got a huge following over yeah, there. Yeah, like it's the, only, it's the only game where there's a, there's a, a PV requirement to get on their leaderboard site <laughs> at all. Yes, it, it's, it's amazing. So they're, they're all wonderful people. Uh, shout outs to Dave DFWM on Task Videos, who actually cre first worked out a task route using uh, the glitch that I used here. Uh, I took that and I made some improvements. I added the seed lock glitch, uh, but he was the one who first came out with that, so shout out to that. Shout out to Taskbot for being awesome. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, I guess that will do it for me. You're not going to sing? I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> with my voice? Are you kidding? <laughs> Thank you for all the work you've put into this series. <laughs> yeah, give it up for Vaxxer one more time, everybody. Let me, let me blast through some of these complimentary donations here. Anonymous with $5 saying, Vaxerd is to Dragon Warrior as Neo is to the Matrix. This run is a miracle to behold. Command! Uh, we also had uh, $10 from Jet Kusanagi who said, I can't believe I've been working in a hotel for the past two years when I could have just been selling ravens. 
Uh, here's $100 from Danielle Church, who says, Hi, Vax. Your sister reminds you not to jump in the big, big black pit no matter how much fun it seems like. Have a good rest of the run. Donation runner's choice. And now back to that level spam. <laughs> Uh, Bit Dragon with $15 uh, said, I had to donate during Dragon Warrior 3. It was my first RPG on the NES, and I could remember playing. Seeing a minus one HP to the Pilgrim's spell list was hilarious. Keep up the great work, and good luck to all the runners. Krista Borg with some couch recognition, $25 donated with the comment, I just want to give a big shout out to the guy who got me into the speedrunning community, NES Cardinality. Good luck on the run, Vax. Xenogears88 donated $10 and said, Dragon Warriors Without Borders. Kyle the Spark donated $10 and said, Command? It's dangerous to go alone. Take the, wait, wrong cave. Arthur, the last ancient, donated $25 and said, Command? As a programmer, I know full well random is never really random. Manipulating and exploiting this just goes to show how amazing and precise speedrunning can be. Respect and bless RNG. Thanks, Arthur. The king donated $50 and said, Here's $50. Save the kingdom or whatever. Just get out of my throne room. All right, and up next on Summer Games Done Quick 2018, we'll be having a lot of Sonic action for you, beginning with Sonic Adventure DX Director's Cut. I've been Prolix, but my time on the microphone here with you is about over. I'll be handing it over to the wonderful and talented Liz Star next. Uh, we'll be taking a short commercial break, and uh, I'll catch you guys either uh, late Thursday or maybe on, uh, maybe on Friday or Saturday. Until uh, then, take care. Uh, enjoy the speed runs. And we'll uh, talk with y'all later. Have a good one. Hello, everybody. I'm Liz Starr, and welcome back to, G to SGDQ 2018, Summer Games Done Quick. We're coming up here in Sonic Block. Uh, hope we're not too slow, because we're going to go faster, 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 faster. Uh, let me just go ahead and let you know what we're doing here. We're gathering money for Doctors Without Borders. Doctors Without Borders, or uh, Medicine Sans Frontiers, is a medical humanitarian organization working in more than 60 countries around the world. MSF is a private international association. It provides, they provide assistance to populations in distress, to victims of natural or man-made disasters, and to victims of armed conflict. They do so irrespective of race, religion, creed, or political convictions. You can find out more at doctorswithoutborders.com. We got $15 from Max Ziabdis. I apologize. Hey, GDQ, long time watcher, first, second time donator. I love the Castlevania block, and I'm donating during the endless level up part of Dragon Warrior 3. I'm so excited for Sonic Block, my favorite run every year, and for countless other great games, including my f new favorite, Celeste. Best of luck to all the runners, and save the animals.
Super Novice donates $250 for the craziest RPG run I've ever seen. Daimon donates $150. Was planning on donating later in the marathon, but this w DW3 run is just too good to pass up on. Awesome work by Runner and Couch. Thanks, dudes. $25 from Command. I command you to put this towards the Blindfolded Demise. And for those of you who are wondering, the Blindfolded Demise Skyward Sword run is at 12,638 out of 15,000, so we're really close. If you're looking for something to donate, I think that would be a good choice. Navi says, listen, donates $10. Hey, listen, you have to listen if you want to complete that blindfolded run in Skyward Sword. Here's 10 rupees to get you closer to that incentive. $15 from Plastic Stomach. I'll have to miss the Sonic block because of work, but I hope the runners go fast anyway. $25 from Aaron Jevleth, donating another $25 for Prolux being the first to correctly pronounce my name. This donation goes to his choice. And uh, I did not hear him pronounce your name, so I apologize. $25 from Uoper12, great DQ, uh, DQ3 run. Now it's time to escape from the city. Apic Theologian donates $25. I may develop neck problems looking over my shoulder at work to make sure no one's watching me uh, watch GDQ, but it's totally worth it. Here's $25 for the SMB one-handed run. $100 from Innate337. Said I'm missing SGDQ at work right now, but still donate to support. Kill the animals. $50 from Gumi45. Hey everyone, it's Gumi. I first found G SGDQ in 2015 while recovering from getting wisdom teeth removed. I was instantly hooked. Been watching ever since. Keep on doing the amazing work you always do. Also, shout out to my good friend Lauren, who's been putting up with my horrible Sonic-based jokes for the past four years. You're the best, buddy. $10 from Felicia Carreri. We're watching you, Luke Blackwood. Way to go from your aunt in Florida. $10. 